Okay, hi everyone. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to a secret ingredient that you've got inside of your chip kit boards that you didn't know about um, that will make things really interesting for you as you finish this class and decide to work on maybe some really interesting projects, uh, some cool things you've always wanted to build or to program, and you want to do it uh, as easily and painlessly as possible. So I'm going to show you some really neat things that you can do with your board. So the very first thing to do is to point you to a YouTube video, and there's a bit.ly link right here on the screen. Just copy this into your web browser. and. This, uh, this link is to a video on an intro to something called the Arduino. And the Arduino is a revolutionary board, uh, electronics board, to make electronics projects. And it turns out that your DP32 and your WF32 chip kit boards have the capability of being Arduinos as well. And so all of the, the neat stuff that you can do with Arduino, you can also do with your boards. In order to make that happen, you need to go to this other link, the intro to chip kit and the Arduino, and it's a bit.ly link as well that's listed here on the screen. Now I'm gonna open up the web browser, and if you take a look at that second link, it'll bring you to this page right here, this chip kit um, web page that says how to install the Arduino IDE. And the Arduino IDE has an option to add support for your chip kit boards. So it means that you don't have to pay any more money, you can use these free tools, and you can use all the greatness and goodness and deliciousness of Arduino on that board too. So I'm going to, I'm going to get you to uh, download that, and you'll end up getting to this page right here, where it asks you to download the Arduino 1.6.8 or greater uh, IDE, and it's available for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. So choose your flavor of computer that you want to use, and it's supported for you. Uh, I'm going to stop right now and get that downloaded and come back in a moment. Okay, so I've downloaded the Arduino IDE and I've fired it up. And depending on which computer you're using, the uh, window for Arduino should look similar to this. Uh, it'll be a nice little sort of small window. And when it opens up, it shows you some sample source code immediately in that window right there. And there are ways of opening up um, examples and things like that that are available to you with the basic package. Now, if we go back to that web page on installing the software, um, right below the link for Arduino IDE, it says install the chip kit core. So we need to click on that link. And when it loads up, there'll be uh, some instructions down here that mentions something about auto installing via a URL from within the Arduino IDE. This is the easiest way to do it. What you end up doing is copying uh, that link right there, this GitHub link, you copy that, and then you go back into Arduino, go to Preferences, and this will be different on Windows and on Linux, but you'll have to find the Preferences, and um, where it says Additional Board Manager URLs, copy in or you paste in the link that was on that web page and you hit OK. Now we're going to read the rest of the instructions right here. It says now select tools board board manager uh, menu from the Arduino IDE. So we're going to go back there. Tools board board manager And let's see if we can filter for chip kit. There we go, right there. So chip kit by chip kit community. And let's take a look for the boards that we're using right here. We've got the chip kit WF32 and the DP32 right there is right there as well. So I'm going to click on install. And as you can see, it's downloading and installing the tools. Shouldn't take very long. And now we're loading in support for the DP32. So this is for the DP32 as well as the WF32 boards. Okay, so now that the software has been downloaded for the chip kit boards through the Arduino IDE, let's go take a look if those items appear on the Arduino 
menu. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to Arduino. I'm going to go over to Tools because right now on the bottom of this window you can see that uh, by default it has selected the Arduino Uno on COM port 1 as um, the hardware target. We're going to take a look to see if we can find other boards. So if I scroll down here, you can see that there's some chip kit boards like the Pro MX4, the chip kit Pi, uh, and some other ones. Now, unfortunately, it's cropped out of the video, but uh, the DP32 is found down below. So I'm going to show you a screenshot from that right here. And you can see that if you scroll down far enough on the list, you'll find the chip kit DP32 right there. And the WF32 is also somewhere else on the list. It's further down on the list. So your chip kit board is now supported by the Arduino IDE that everybody and their dog is now using to do programming of microcontrollers and microprocessor boards. So let me see. Let's go over to the next thing that we need to know. If we take a look here, there is some information on this bit.ly link right here on how to restore the bootloader on your chip kit board. Now it turns out that most of the time when you program your chip kit, you're using some sort of programmer like this PIC32 or the other programmer that you're using and you plug it in to a USB here and you power up the board and you can download programs from MPLabX in through here. Well, it turns out that in order to make the Arduino software work, you need a, a memory resident program called a bootloader that sits on the, the chip itself. And that bootloader has to be downloaded from one of the resource pages for the chip kit boards. And I've added two more links right here, one for the WF32 and one for the DP32. And if you go to one of those pages, let's take a look here. Here is the link for the resource page for the WF32. And if you scroll down in design resources, there's something called a bootloader. And this is a small uh, machine piece of code that you can download onto your, in this case, the WF32. It's a zip file. Download it, and uh, I'll show you how to deal with it in a second. For the DP32, this is the resource page as well. If you scroll down, you will also find a bootloader image uh, to file that you can put onto your microcontroller board. And we are going to use the MPLAB X resources and your programmer to get that file into here so that you can use the Arduino software. Okay, so now that we've got the board and we've got that hex file, the bootloader, that will enable Arduino to work on that chip right there, we now have to program that hex file through this programmer into the DP32, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so on the screen right now, what I've got is MPLAB X. I'm going to start a new project. And in this project, I am going to create a pre-built hex loadable image project. I go to next. I state that I've got an M uh, MX250F128B. I'm using a PIC kit to program it, and I'm going to browse for that file, which is called the chipkit bootloader dp32.hex file, which was downloaded previously. I'm going to grab that file. <clears throat> I'm going to call this um, some uh, different name, like this. So this is my project name right here. I hit finish. And Right now, as you can see right here, I've got this bootloader uh, project. It's <coughs> excuse me. It's set to main. I am now going to program it on here. So all I do is go up to the program, the make and program uh, icon. I click on it, and up comes the screen that says that it's detected my pick 32. It's found it. It's erasing it, it's programming it, and it's now complete. And if you take a look, there is an LED that is now flashing on the DP32 board. That means the bootloader is working. So Eureka, we have Arduino on here. See how fast that was? Okay, so we are now ready to put an Arduino program on the DP32 board. So the first thing to do is to notice that there are lots of examples. And the examples can be found in the Arduino file menu, and there's things like um, 
really basic ones like blinking. So it'll blink in LED, and I know we've done lots of blinking of LEDs in uh, uh, EECS 2021. But um, an example for how this blinking can be done is written right here in an example, and I encourage you to explore that. I'm actually going to do something a little bit more complicated, and I'm going to show you an example from something I wrote up earlier, which was a program that manipulates the data from the uh, dial right here and the LEDs as well. And so there's input from the, LED, from the dial and the derivative is taken on the time value of the signal from that dial and it modifies the value of the LEDs. And I'll actually post this code for you as well. So it gives you an example of something relatively complicated. Now, the thing that you need to know is that you have to specify, as you can see down here, that you have both the DP32 and that you have the right uh, output port or USB port. So make sure that in your board menu it says Chipkit 32, uh, Chipkit DP32, and if not, select that one in the menu over here. Next, you want to make sure that you select the right serial port or USB port. Uh, every computer has a different set of USB ports. You, may have, you might have to explore a little bit to figure out which one is yours. Um, but in my case, it's this one right here. Okay, so the first thing to do is to compile it, or in Arduino terms, verify it. So I'm going to do that. It compiles the sketch. They call program sketches. It takes a little bit of time. And then afterwards, I'm going to hit that button right there to upload onto here. So we're waiting for the compilation to occur. And there you go. It tells us how much memory it takes up, that there's global variables, etc. Now I'm going to upload. And you can see that it's using a special programmer for the PIC32. And it's saying there's no target found. So in that case, what you need to do is reprogram using MPLABX this board. And we'll do that right now and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back and I have reprogrammed using MPLABX the bootloader that's on here. So now I'm going to try and upload one more time. And we'll take a look at the debug down here, and yes, it is programmed, it's verified, it's ready to go. So we have now programmed this board. What I'm gonna do now is turn the dial, and depending on how quickly, it's difficult to do, I turn that dial, the number of LEDs uh, will light up, either one, two, three, or four, depending on how fast I'm turning that dial. It's calculating the derivative of the rotation of that dial and proportionally letting up the number of LEDs. But basically, it's really easy to do things like calculus on a, um, a PIC32 uh, using the Arduino interface. Uh, the number of lines of code that, that are required are pretty low. And um, there are lots of great examples online as to how to do that. So I'll leave it to you. You can explore that on your own. And uh, we'll see you in class. Thanks, everyone.